guys are right from the Seattle Seahawks and you are watching Norb Camp. What's going on, everybody? This is Norb Cab coming at you on this Tuesday evening. Thanks for joining me for this live stream. Didn't think there'd be that much breaking news on this first day. It's not even free agency yet. It's really just the start of the period where teams start to apply their franchise tags and all this. But boy, the Seahawks making noise already. Can't wait to get into it with you guys and see what we think about this first round of cuts. A lot of cutting going on in the NFL the last couple of days. Uh, but I uh, appreciate you guys being on here. Make sure you do what, you know, I love to have you guys do, which is hit that notification bell. Hit the subscribe button, of course, and the notification bell and follow me here on YouTube as well. My other socials, you can find me on uh, TikTok, Instagram, X, and on Facebook at Norbcam. All right, uh, down on the scroll on the bottom, I want to say thank you to all the Norbfam members down below. Uh, for supporting my channel. So I appreciate you guys. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, first of all, welcome to the show for you guys uh, in the chat. You guys are jumping into it right away. I appreciate that. Like Aiden, Louise, Dio, Brando, Monsoon, Daniel, Barry Sports Highlights, Jackson Miller, D, uh, Matt, Mateo Bulusan, Jojo Hisgrove, Uma Pirate Girl, Uma, and yes, more to come. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to break some things down here just to see how it feels losing these three, these three players. I think one was expected, seen a long time coming, but the other two, we hadn't really talked about that. And I'm going to give my opinion as well as kind of what this means financially for the Seahawks, as well as did they really deserve to be cut? We'll kind of look at that and see, uh, see what we think about that. Um, I am going to take your calls. Uh, for those of you who are in Discord, you can jump in on Discord and I'll open some channels over there. Uh, but for those of you who are on the phone line, oh, that just reminds me, I got to set the phone line up, which I haven't done yet. So <laughs> let me do that while I'm uh, killing time. I was in such a hurry to get this rolling that uh, I didn't even think uh, about uh, getting the phone line open for you guys. But Jeremy G in the Super Chats, Chrysostomo 2.0 is here. Where? Where's Chrysostomo? Eee, what's up, suckers? You guys suck. I don't care what you guys do with the free agency or whatever. Four Niners are going to kick your butt again. Eee. Anyway, I uh, hate when that guy shows up unexpectedly. All right, let me get this uh, uh, phone line up. It's uh, I I'm going to get through my stuff first, and then we'll take calls at the end. The number 202-926-1076. The code 696153. Uh, let me just get this... Uh, this app going so that I'm ready to take your calls when time comes. Seattle Smash is in there uh, saying long love Will Disley. Seahawks Martin is in here, long time collaborator on my channel. Seahawks Martin, good to see you on here. Says it was time. Um, all right, here we go. I got this primo. Wow, we got a caller on here already. Well, hold on there. Hold your horses. Hold your horses, man. I'm going to uh, get this set up. i got to get a few words out here before I do it, but from the 480, already ready to jump on. Just hold on tight. I will get to you in a second. I'd be Dave Jones, one of the Norm Fan members is on here. It says, crazy KJ News. Yes, uh, I've been talking about it since yesterday, KJ News. Uh, KJ, news about KJ moving from the, you know, his podcast realm, looking for a coaching opportunity, and what does he go and do? He doesn't get one with the Seahawks. He does get one with the 49ers and is now going to be the assistant linebacker coach and defensive quality control guy with the uh, rival 49ers. That's right. E. Uh, not good. Not good. But I'm happy for him from one hand, you know, career wise. But I wish him success personally, like not to get fired. But I certainly don't want his team to succeed. Can we have both? Can he be successful in his job but have the team suck? I guess you could have two. Can have your cake and eat it too, I hope. Um, we're going to get into it. I'll try to read some of your questions. Super Chat's a great way to get my attention, though, for sure. Uh, but let's uh, let's get into it as uh, I wait for you guys' uh, phone calls and people in the chat uh, in Discord to join. I see you, uh, Jade, already up in there. Hello, Jade. You're looking very green in your screen right now. I don't know why that is, but uh, hey, it's a good color anyway. Uh, all right, so... 
three big cuts announced today. Uh, Jamal Adams, Quandre Diggs, our safety duo. At one point, the most expensive safety tandem, and now the nothing tandem. Both of them gone from the, the Seahawks. And tight end Will Disley, all three of them cut by the Seahawks today. Clearly, the Seahawks are making moves to make room salary cap-wise, getting rid of these expensive salaries for guys they don't feel are worth keeping around. And let's start with Jamal Adams. That's the easy one, right? He's been kind of like everyone's just saying, ah, we got to lose Jamal Adams, lose Jamal Adams. So it finally happened. They ripped the Band-Aid off. And let's just look at what does this mean, money-wise. Jamal Adams, uh, by cutting him, they save essentially a net $7.3 million against the cap. So they get $7.3 million on the cap. They also avoid having to pay $17.5 million next year in 2025. Kind of like the Russell Wilson thing. They cut Russ to avoid paying him another $39 million in 2025. So they sent, they saved some cash there. The dead money is $19.6 million for, for Quandre Diggs. Main thing, bottom line, you, make, you put all that together, we get $7.3 million salary cap back. And Jamal Adams is bye-bye, off to look for his next venture, whatever that might be. So needless to say, I think we can all say that that was a bust. Maybe not as big of a bust as the Russell Wilson trade, but a bust nonetheless. And it's ironic that both these guys' bust trades go down and being cut within a day of each other. Um, just unfortunate because he was so good in 2020. Let's look at just his productivity. He came in 2020. Uh, 12 games he played, nine and a half sacks. Remember he set that record for, for a DV? And we were like thinking, oh man, this guy's going to be rocking the plays after that. Well, we would never see a single sack ever again. Isn't that weird? He had nine and a half in that year, zero the rest of his time. But mostly because he wasn't available. He wasn't playing. Uh, in 2020, besides the sacks, he had 59 solo tackles, 24 assists, made the Pro Bowl. Everything looked great. They signed him to an extension, and then that's where things just kind of go downhill from there. 2021, he played 12 games again. Zero sacks, 56 tackles, 31 assists. You know, almost the same defensive performance, just no sacks. But then it re the wheels really came off. 2022, played one game. That was the, year, that was the game where he, you know, Played, Russell, ironically, tried to sack Russell Wilson in the process. When he wrapped up on him, he kind of, Russell sort of spun him off. And that's when he hit his knee on the ground. And it that was sort of the mark of the end, sadly. Two years ago, first game of the year, he goes down and wouldn't play again uh, with that kneecap injury. And uh, it's just sad. It felt like it was, you know, going to be that year that he'd kind of break through. And instead, it broke apart. And the knee thing, he was never the same after that. He had three solo tackles in 2022. 2023, he tried to come back last year, played in nine games. Again, no sacks, 34 solo tackles, which isn't horrible, 14 assists. But bottom line was, you know, between the injuries and, you know, only playing half the season. And then, of course, there was all the off-field antics. The, t the Twitter thing, when he went after a reporter who said something not great about him, uh, just, I think, it was it was time and clearly, you and I thought, well, probably makes sense to let him go. But unless Coach McDonald thought there's one way they can maybe see him fit to the system, but clearly that was the end of that. So he was gone. I think that makes the most sense. So let's get into the other uh, two guys that we're talking about here. Quandre Diggs. That was a little bit surprising, but maybe not entirely. Let's let's just see what financially what this did. So in his last year, um, he played 17 games. So he Healthy all throughout. One pick, 63 solo tackles, 32 assists, and one tackle for loss. The numbers don't really tell the whole story, though, because it, it, it shows how many tackles he made, how many picks he made, but it doesn't show how much he wasn't in the right position. And I hate to say it, too, but even watching 2023, it felt like it was a systemic breakdown in the entire defense. But watching Quandre Diggs, and I don't know, that, again, this could be just like when everybody up front's not playing well and the corners aren't tackling, and next thing you know, where there's getting run on all over the place, so the next thing you know, the linebackers are doing too much or in the right positions, and the safeties are trying to overcompensate. But it felt like there was a lot of times more often than, than previously where he's the safety. He's the last line of defense. He's got to be the guy who's got to make the final tackle. If he gets past everybody else, he's got to make the tackle. And there's so many times felt like he missed tackles, uh, was out of position. Um, just, I remember thinking, it's like, man, I love this guy, but man, it's just not been a good year for the defense and for, for Diggs as well. 
So, and it's the first year he didn't make the Pro, uh, Pro Bowl either. He had made it three years in a row prior to that. So, I was not completely surprised when I saw it. I was a little bit surprised, but not completely. Uh, we have Julian Love back there. Clearly, that dude has earned his stripes. He's going to be the safety moving forward. But now we've got holes to fill in the safety position. You know, in addition to linebacker, we've got holes to fill. On the defensive line, we got holes to fill. We got more holes to fill now. Tight end now. We got to start looking for a tight end. These were positions I wasn't even thinking about in terms of our positions of need. Now we've got really positions of need, which is why they got to open up this money space to get uh, have room to sign these other guys. And it's going to be interesting to see if what they do. Uh, this is all priming up for what's going to happen next week when the free agency craziness begins. All right, so what does that result in? That's going to be $11 million saved against the cap. Believe it or not, getting rid of Quandre Diggs actually saved more money than than cutting Jamal Adams. 7.3 for Jamal being cut, $11 million cutting Quandre Diggs. So financially, it made a lot of sense. Obviously, they must have a plan to replace him because we clearly need depth at safety now uh, besides who we got in Julian Love. So we'll see what happens there. Well, with Disley, that was the other one that I think it's been talked about because I think Kobe Parkinson was probably the most likely tight end that they would keep of the three. Um, Noah Fant expected to be gone in free agency, but Will Disley was under contract. But I remember when he signed his extension, I remember – a lot of people, including myself, thinking, man, that's a lot of money for a guy whose main job is just to block. Uh, not the most productive in terms of pass catching. I remember his first year, he, he, he did great, got injury. I remember he was Achilles or something and uh, kind of cut that short, but never quite lived up to that hype of, you know, being like that number one tight end. You know, we had three, three good tight ends, but never not one who really rose up and being great. I say Noah Fant was the most productive one, but... Well, we're kind of in that search now for that tight end, that magic guy who's going to be it. Could Kobe Parkinson be that guy? Will they make the moves to keep him here longer term? Uh, a lot to be decided here. So Will Disley, in his final year last year, played 16 games, uh, 17 catches for, out of 22 targets, 172 yards and a touchdown. Not exactly blow your mind numbers that justify a big a contract that he had. So the cut by losing him uh, saves the Seahawks. Uh, let's see, it is six point nine seven mil against the cap, so a little bit less than Jamal Adams. So, but again, it, uh, it made sense. I looked at it. And I was I wasn't like, oh, how could they do that? It was like, mm, yeah, kind of, kind of makes sense. Same with uh, Quandre Diggs. It was that same feeling. Not like as much as Jamal Adams. Like, yeah, that was coming, but it felt like. We could do better. We could do better. And we need the we need the cap space for sure. So with all that, oh, by the way, oh look at this. 12th man cam. Welcome to NorFam as an all pro member. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And 12th man cam. I like the cam part of it. Joining the North Fam as an all pro member. Thank you very much. Appreciate uh, your support, brother. Uh, okay, so what does this mean total savings? So they the Seahawks save. With those moves, they save $34.5 million in cash and in total $25 million against the cap. So now the Seahawks have $36.2 million in cap space that they've now gained with the combination of the increased cap this year plus that uh, $25 million. We now got $36 million. So now we got some room to play with, but I don't think they're done. I think they got some contract work to do. The top of that list of salary cap uh, numbers now. Uh, with the new update, Tyler Lockett, number one there with a 26.895, 26 million cap hit, almost 27. Geno Smith is second with 26.4 million. And then DK Metcalf, 24.5 million. I don't think any of those three guys are going anywhere, but maybe they can work some of that. I don't know how they work that magic. It's like, oh, big cap hit. Oh, let's just convert some of the signing bonus and roster bonus into signing bonus and kick the can down the line. I don't know. They find some way to work it out. But hopefully they can do that and just get a little bit of that number. It's not about money, right? There's plenty of money. Jody Allen's got plenty of money. It's just about that cap. Got to work out that cap space so that the number works. And I figure they'll, they'll, they'll work something out with those guys, hopefully. Uh, I mean, they already re reworked Gino, so he's kind of set. The question is, DK, Lockett, can they do anything else to Convert some of that you know, signing bonus, roster bonus business. 
And uh, hang on, you guys, on the, the lines. I see you, Cam, PDX Cam, and uh, over at Phoenix. Uh, I'll get to you guys momentarily. So there you go. Those are the numbers we got. And so for me personally, I'm really not disappointed. I'm in that mindset now where I've kind of, with this whole season, with Pete Carroll leaving or being let go and the new coach, new coordinators, you know, I'm, I'm really of that set. And I mentioned, too, that even a guy like Bobby Wagner, I hate, I've kind of had to embrace that reality that as much as I love the nostalgia of keeping the name there, I don't think it's the best move for the team moving forward. So I feel like Bobby Wagner's probably played his last game with the Seahawks. I'd be actually kind of surprised if they keep him uh, for another year. But we'll see. The guy can tackle. The, question is, the, the problem is, where do those tackles happen? And can he keep up with guys in coverage? That part is definitely slowed down in his game. So love you, Bobby. But I think for the team moving forward, I feel like a lot of new leafs to turn over. So uh, we will see what happens uh, in the next few days. Next week's going to be very, very interesting. That's when things are really uh, crazy because the, uh, the, the legal tampering period, I believe, starts on Monday, and then the actual signing of free agents to teams will start happening on Wednesday. So it's going to be blowing up all day uh, uh, for sure on Wednesday, if not sooner. So it's going to be fun to see, but I didn't expect this much blood from the hatchet to be spilled so quickly uh, in this beginning part of the week. So... We're just getting started, man. I feel like this is 2010 all over again when uh, when Pete Carroll and John Schneider were like making tons of moves every day. Move roster this, cut this, move that guy. It's crazy. Um, I.B. Dave Jones says Tyler is 29, and he did say he wanted to play till he's 30. So another year left on Tyler Lockett. So I, mean, I still think the guy, he slowed down definitely last year a little bit, but I think he's still got a little bit gas in the tank left. Oh, actually, I.B. Dave Jones says he's 31. Okay, I don't know. I haven't checked his age lately. I still think he can play. He made that beautiful catch at the end of the season against the Cardinals to get that win. Uh, that pointless, as it turns out, win against the Cardinals, but a win nonetheless. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens there. I see people talking about getting rid of DK. Uh, you guys keep the chats going on there. Um, debating about that. DK, I feel like, again, we can unlock that beast. I, I, I'm, I'm really excited to see what, what Ryan Grubb... I, I'd love to see Ryan Grubb with this same trio of receivers, a new tight end possibly, and with the same quarterback in Geno Smith. I want Ryan Grubb to prove to me and everybody, for all the haters and all the ones who say, let's trade DK, get rid of Geno, he sucks, blah, 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 that with the right coordinator and a new coaching scheme, I feel like... He's going to unlock this, and it's, we're going to see, like, oh, my God, where has this been this whole time? And these guys have been here together? Why have we not seen this before? I guess we'll find out. And it was just so in, it's such an indictment when we saw, I don't know if you guys saw the interview uh, during the Super Bowl week when Jackson, Smith, and Jigba was asked, so there's a lot of fans excited about Shane Waldron coming as our offensive coordinator to Chicago. Oh, how do you feel about uh, Shane Waldron? And he could not say anything. He was like, um, am I live right now? I mean, it was shocking. I, I was surprised how much he was not prepared to answer that question. But it told it told the real raw truth about what he thought about, you know, Shane Waldron. Because, you know, if, if, just like uh, Russell, anytime anybody leaves the team, Russell Wilson leaving the Broncos or, you know, a coach moving on, the players will shout him out. Say, oh, man, you're getting a great coach. Like when McDonald came here, Ravens players just blown up saying, oh, you guys are getting a great coach. You guys are going to love him in Seattle. I don't know one person saying you're going to love Shane Waldron in Chicago. And that, to me, tells me a lot about that short time that he was here, that it never quite lived up to what expect expectations we had. Oh, I think we kind of know why. It just wasn't the right fit, so... Obviously, reshuffled the deck. It's fresh all over the place. So, you know, no longer can we say, oh, it was Pete Carroll. He was always holding the reins back or this and that. I mean, it's going to be completely wide open. The only common denominator now in terms of the management side is John Schneider, who's got total say on personnel. Outside of that, all coaching decisions, it's going to be a whole new whole new uh whole new thing so i'm excited i'm excited to see what where this goes but we are just getting started folks all right uh, i'm gonna jump in and start grabbing some phone calls here hopefully if this uh, works correctly 
Uh, let's see. Let's go to the phone line. PDX Cam. PDX Cam. Let's see. Hold on a second. Let me get you unmuted here. I haven't done this in a while. PDX Cam, is this you? Yes, it is. Oh, yep. There you go. PDX Cam. Uh-oh. Yep. He does not How hear you doing, Lord? That's never a good sign. PDX Cam in the house. Can you hear me over there? Hopefully, I'm not doing some technical issues. Yes, I Let me can. find out here. I can hear you, but you cannot apparently hear Hello? me. Oh, what the heck is that about? Uh, da, da, da. Oh, I know why. Hold on a second. There we go. PDX Cam, is this you? Hello? There it is. Yes, it is. I just did punch you up. There you go. You were there. I was just not here on my end. Hey, what's going on, man? I haven't heard, talked to you in a while. I ran into you. We ran to each other at the Seahawks game. Uh, was which game was that? Was it the Steeler game? That was no, uh, that was the one against Washington. Washington, yes, yes, that was great to to, to see out there. But uh, yeah, what do you think about um, th- this first round of cuts by the Seahawks? You like it? Don't like it? What's your opinion? Um, in terms of at least for Jamal, this is kind of what I expected because he has not been reliable since twenty twenty. Right. And really, it was just, it was going to keep hurting us, keeping him around, especially if he was just going to keep getting injured. Sure. Um, as for Quandre, that one did catch me off guard a little bit, just because I I honestly really liked him in Seattle. I thought I thought he did well, aside from obvious, you know, the injury concern he does have, obviously, with what happened, I think, his second season in Seattle, with him tearing, with him hurting his leg. Yeah. And then with um, Will Disley, I've I'm, I've been a I was a personal big fan of Will Disley, um, and it was it it sucks to see him go, but paying as much we did for someone who's more of a blocking tight end than an actual passing tight end was a little bit of something that needed to be done because. Honestly, if we're going to pay a guy that much to the block, it should be an offensive lineman. Right. Yeah, I feel like if they could have redone that contract over again, I, I don't have the terms in front of me how much they paid him, but I remember it was a lot. It was like, a, what? They're going to pay him how much? I think if that had been a little more favorable number, then maybe he wouldn't have become uh, a cap casualty at this point. Because I think the guy does have a, you know his ability to block. He's and he he does contribute, just not as much as that contract warranted. So it's unfortunate that you know he becomes a casualty of all this. But you know they're going to have to make some hard decisions. We kind of know that already. Yeah. With so many holes to fill, they're going to have to cut a lot of loose ends. And that was one that I, you know all three of them really. I, I don't feel too much sadness for. Um, just you know. It's it's unfortunate, but it's the harsh reality of this business for sure. Um, what do you think of uh, the Russell Wilson fiasco and the official cutting of uh, the Broncos cutting him yesterday? Any reaction to that? No surprise. Oh. Surprised. Well, before I get into that, I will say that with Disley's contract, it was twenty four million with ten of that guaranteed. How many years was it? It was three. Three years. Okay. And this would have been the first year of that contract. So he yeah. still, I think, got a, got out with like ten million since that was the guaranteed part of it. Right, right. Um, yeah. but as for the Russell Wilson thing, I kind of expected that because just of things kind of seemed they were just falling apart in Denver. Just whether it was. Sean Payton and Wilson not being on the same page, Wilson not being on the same page as his teammates. It, it was just a situation that I, I commend them for trying to fix, like, you know, trying to at least see what's there to see if something could be salvaged. But by the end of it, it really wasn't showing that anything could be fixed. And they're just going to keep hurting themselves by keeping Wilson because he's they're cutting him now and he's not even into his new contract that they signed him to. <laughs> Right. This would have been next season would have been the first start of that contract. Two hundred and fifty four million dollar contract. Yeah. Wow. And isn't he it? didn't even finish out the one that Seattle had him on. It's crazy. 
it is pretty wild how uh, how south that went. But you know, I think it's the combination. It obviously, you know, Russell Wilson played pretty decently last year. It wasn't a horrible season last year, but clearly Sean Payton was not into Russ. You know, he did not, uh, those guys did not get along for whatever reason. From the get-go, he was like, he was asked about, oh, you know, what's going to happen with Russell Wilson's uh, uh, office and special privileges? And he was like, no, nope, that ain't happening this year. You know, I mean, it was right away, he was putting his foot down, like saying, nope, none of that special treatment business. And throughout the year, you saw him kind of yelling out on the sideline and just, you know, saying that they you can't be doing this kissing baby stuff. I mean, it was clear that he was not, he was going to have a short leash on him. And uh, it certainly looked like that was going to be, you know, unless those guys worked it out and, you know, could find this future together, that it wasn't going to be. But clearly, once they'd made that decision that they were going to, you know, bench him to avoid that injury guarantee, well, that was that was it. We knew that the writing was on the wall. They yeah. did not have faith that Russ would be the guy moving forward. So... Now it becomes really interesting to see where Russ potentially ends up. A lot of discussion about him maybe end up with the Steelers, maybe Atlanta, depending on where uh, Kirk Cousins goes, maybe the Raiders. Um, you know, and what level will he be brought in? Will he be there to compete against a, a guy, or will he bring, be brought in to be the starter? You know, there's not a lot of sp spots that you know, are just screaming like, oh, this is the perfect fit. Because right now, I don't know if anybody knows what the perfect fit is because after what they witnessed in Denver with the most, you know, the worst trade in the history of the NFL now, that's, right now, that's that's Russell's legacy. Forget about his legacy as winning his quarterback for Seattle that brought him a Super Bowl. His his legacy now is the, the worst trade in the history of NFL. And how can he wipe that clean? He would have to come back and somehow resurrect his career in the last few years of his career and uh, try to make it with some team that that team's got to be willing to give him that shot. So not to say it's not possible. Yeah. I mean, look at Joe Flacco. Yeah. He had a hell of a season last year coming out just out of almost retirement and uh, off the couch and off the bench. And he came in and, uh, you know, almost brought these guys, you know, oh, yeah. to, to the promise. Well, I promised land, but, you know, to, back to contention. And uh, it was pretty, uh, pretty amazing story. So it could happen, yeah. but Russ is going to have to be like super humble and be willing to like swallow some pride here because, you know, money is not the issue. So well, it's really about where does he want to go where he can actually succeed and win. Yeah. Well, in Denver, it clearly was the situation of two very different mindsets between Wilson and Peyton. Like Peyton was right. certainly more of the of the stubborn uh, of old stubborn school. hands on approach, yeah, old school like old school type of coach mindset that he was. Yeah, where where Russell was more of the sort of sort of laid back mindset. Yeah, and that just didn't it just didn't seem like that sit well with Sean Payton, who certainly wanted to he wanted the team to be serious because he was in a position where he had to kind of like prove something in this season that this team with the right weapons can actually really be good. Like a lot of Broncos fans have been saying, they said all they needed was a quarterback and they right. could be Super Bowl contenders. That was all they were and missing. Right? He was like, supposed to be the magic if you final have... piece of the puzzle. And it just was a, Big disaster. Um, Peter North yeah. in the uh, chat says Deshaun Watson trade was worse. I think the only reason the Deshaun tra was. Watson trade is not considered worse yet is because they've managed to still, like I said, when I mentioned Joe Flacco, he's managed to keep these guys relevant in the absence of Deshaun Watson. Now, if this, if their team had, had you know just completely fell apart and went to five and you know twelve, you know, kind of like the the Broncos did in that first year, it'd be a very different story, but. They've managed to kind of winning cures everything, right? So you kind of forget about those little things when things are working out. But when they don't, it's a disaster. So no. I think that's the reason why people aren't complaining so much about Sean Watson because they've actually managed to still stay relevant. So, but when you when you see it from the other side of it, look how much you're paying to Sean Watson, and you're not getting much success out of him. You're not getting nothing out of him because he's been injured. Couch, <laughs> yeah. But, but the fact that a guy that just came off the couch, a guy that a lot of people thought was done in his NFL career, is yeah. now outperforming him. Right. 
like it it, it kind of speaks volume it is like well we're paying this guy all this money he can't stay healthy but this guy we just brings right off the couch is now doing well for us so we're paying a guy that's not even really playing for us I know it's it's just going to eat eat them into the hole it's wild man it's kind of like what happened with the 49ers with Brock Purdy stepping in when they were trying to figure out Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo and both those guys sort of just fell by the wayside and the Trey Lance thing really was a was a disastrous deal too how much they gave up to get him but fortunately for them they had Brock Purdy waiting in the wings and that kind of saved that whole what would have been a big controversial quarterback disaster yeah. they're just lucky they got Mr. Relevant he turned out to be more than than relevant but if that hadn't, if they hadn't yeah. have him to come back in, it would have been a major disaster over in, in San Francisco. So they kind of lucked out, you know, oh, yeah. call it luck or whatever, foresight. But obviously, nobody saw Brock Purdy being anything for for seven rounds into the draft until the 49ers grabbed him at the very end. Like, oh, let's get him. Luckiest call right there. Don't say it was smart because if they, everybody thought he was the greatest thing, they would have drafted him way earlier. So lucky, yeah. lucky to dodge that conversation. But. Anyway, PDX Gav, thanks for uh, thanks for calling in. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, we'll talk to you again yeah, no sometime problem. soon. All right? right, I am also I also subscribe to you. I was twelve man cam. Oh, okay. All right. Well, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. Love that you joined my yeah, uh, no problem, to man. support my channel, man. I'm the Nord fan. Appreciate it, brother. Man, no problem. We'll, we'll rock and roll this season. It's going to be great. Oh yeah. All right. All right. Moving on. We're going to go to uh, another call here from the seven one seven. From Pennsylvania? Lidditz, yes. Pennsylvania. Hello, Is that right? Hello? Yes, you're on. What's your name? Uh, my name is Zach. Zach. Okay, Zach. Uh, and I, do, Am I reading this right, that you're from uh, Lidditz, Pennsylvania? That's correct. Okay, all right. What you got? We're What's your thoughts? To, um, we're close to the Eagles, Philadelphia, but oh, we're in the Amish okay. country over here. So, so you're a Seahawks fan in Eagle territory? Oh yeah, it's good, but we have the record, so nobody never nobody ever talks bad about us. Because <laughs> the, the Eagles, no matter how good they are, whether it's a Super Bowl year or whatever, they cannot seem to find a way to penetrate the Seahawks. You know, nope, uh, nope. The Seahawks uh, outer core. Anyway, uh, so what you got? What's your reaction to all this? Man, I I think it's good for saving cap. Um, I, I I I appreciated Jamal, but. You know, he didn't do his job, so we had to let him go. But I think if some of us, some of us, I feel like are a little upset that we let Will Disley go. But I feel like, man, if we, you know, ponder on that, man, we got to look forward to another season. You know, those three, those three uh, cuts happened today, but we can't do anything about it. So let's move forward and let's, you know, look forward to the draft and move on. You know, I mean, we can't look, wag, you know, have our tail wag between our legs and oh, you know, out about these moves. So you 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 didn't want to see Disley. God, you weren't happy with that. Is I don't what you're care. Saying? Yeah, I don't care. I feel like there's enough tight ends out there that you know anybody can just get 175 yards that he did this season. So I don't I don't really care. But I'm just saying for the people that are you know a little bummed, I'm like you know man, we got a whole entire season. Let's not get caught up on these get right, caught right. up on these three cuts today. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just the start, man. I think there's gonna be a lot more. Cuts and there might be some where we go. Oh my God! I can't believe they just let that guy go. I, I haven't experienced that yet, but we're gonna find out if uh, there are more surprise cuts waiting in the wings. And some of them might be one of your favorite players. You know, like I said, I don't see this yeah. receiver trio being broken up. And if they did, I would be, you know, I would be surprised. Um, I would be disappointed. Like I said, I want to see this trio given a shot, uh, particularly this JSN Lockett. Metcalf trio. I want to see them in this new offense with a new coordinator. I just, I want to see at least one year with these guys together and see what they can do. Just to kind of prove everybody. Yeah, like, see, sure. these guys were good. They just needed the right situation. So we'll see if right, that happens. Right. Uh, yeah, all right, man. No, well, thanks, for, awesome thanks for the, the call. Appreciate it, brother. Yep. See you later. All right. Take care. All right. Let's go to uh, the Discord. I see we got a couple in here. Uh, AD, I see your super chat. Thank you very much. He said, uh, wants me to take your call. Oh, I got another call coming in on my phone. I'm going to take that one later. Uh, let me go to, because Campbell from Michigan Kraken, he calls himself, has been waiting for a long time. So I'm going to go to Campbell, and then I'll go to you, AD. So Campbell, uh, you are on via Discord. Campbell, what's up? What's up, Mo? How are you doing, man? Campbell, you there? Oh, wait, hold on. 
you are there. I gotta turn myself up. Here we go. Okay. Hey, Elbo, what's up? Here we go. All right, what's up, man? Uh, a lot, apparently. You know, I thought this would be like a quiet little week, you know, talk about franchise tags here and there, but man, didn't expect to, to so many changes right off the bat. Your thoughts on these moves, early moves by the Seahawks? You like it? Don't like it? Uh, Quandre Diggs is the most surprising for me. I'm I'm stunned they 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 moved on from him. I thought it was a good safety, and Jamal Adams, I. I way understand he needed to move on. Mm -hmm. Like, like I respected him. I, I was looking forward for him to play for the Seahawks. Like, you know, with his injuries, you know, he had to move on. Like, like he's a good player, but I think he needs to rebuild and go to a different franchise. But um, Will Disley, that's that's tough. That's very very tough. He's a great Seahawks player, and I think deserves to go. Maybe a Ring of Honor in the future, maybe a deck or something, but... Really? You think he's no. earned Ring of Honor? I don't know. I don't know. I might maybe, be a stretch, I, I don't know. That's kind of a stretch, know, like, even for a guy who I liked him. Like, I was all for like, him. He's a nice player. Like, he's a good player. But, yeah, we can't but, put everybody in the Ring of Honor. <laughs> That's because he yeah. likes him. doesn't mean they deserve the Ring of Honor. You gotta have some, gotta have some lines drawn for the, that position. Otherwise, you have a Ring of Honor that just goes on forever, right? So, uh, <laughs> you know, even some great players haven't been on that, uh, haven't put on, been put on the ring we yet. Put, we can put you in the Seahawks Hall, Hall of Fame if hey, you want yeah, to. Yeah, I won't say no to that. Um, but, yeah, yeah, so I'm with you, man. I know it's going to be hard. There's going to be some ones that are going to be tough to swallow. Like, like I said, the Bobby Wagner one, you know, it's tough. I, 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 I don't know for sure if he's going to be back. Again, he's already a free agent, so he's free to go where he wants to. But will the mm -hmm. Seahawks offer him to come back? Will he get an offer from another team like KJ did when he went to go play for the Raiders? Will he just retire? I mean, I don't know. It depends on what, what Bobby's thinking. But I wouldn't be surprised if he's not back, you know, in a Seattle uniform. You know, just like KJ, he wanted to get a job here. They turned him down for whatever reason. So he went to the 49ers. So, you know, it's, again, yeah. it's a tough business and they got a plan. You got to go with the team colors, man, and, and just hope they know what they're doing. And so far, I'm, yeah. I'm with I'm with what they've been doing so far. I, I'm with the moves. I, you know, as hard as it is for some of them. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, man, I appreciate the call, man. Thanks, uh, and I, I look forward. To, yeah. you know, I've mentioned this before that I'm going to be going to my first cracking game on Friday. So uh, oh, no. I can't, can't wait to. I'm watching. I'm watching the Jets right now. So it's two two right now. So. Ooh. Man. Okay. So I don't know. I'm gonna have to learn real quick about uh, about hockey because I've not been keeping up with it. So I, I got to go in there at least somewhat educated on what's been happening this year and what's at stake. <laughs> there, are they, there's still playoff potential, right? They're still in the mix, I assume. Um, they're battling for the wild cards right now. Like, okay. um, we ha we face they were facing Calgary yesterday. I thought we we're gonna get over Calgary, but we're still like in six in the Pacific. So okay, we're so just we're just fighting for. It. So they got right a shot. They got a shot. How many games uh, left? Um, I think there's like 20 left, I think. Okay, so oh. Plenty of time. Okay, so this game needs something. I just want to make sure this, yeah, this game needs something. Yeah, there's probably some time left. But. All right, all right. Sounds good. All right, man. Well, thanks for the call. Appreciate it. All right, no problem. All right, let's go. Uh, let's see. We got... All right, so uh, where is he? AD. Let's go to AD. AD, what's up? Hey. AD, okay, you go. are hey. in your own apartment now, right? Yes, sir. Congratulations, AD. Hey. He texted me back uh, a few days ago and told me, guess what, man? I'm moving into my own apartment, so huge step. How are you liking it? I mean, your place looks looks great, man. I, I don't have it ready to put on camera, but I can see it there. You got, is it like a studio? A studio apartment? Yep, it's a studio apartment, bud. Nice. You got the TV, the kitchen right there. So how does this? So you've been on your own for, what, about four days? How many days has it been since you've moved out? Uh, I moved in uh, last week on Wednesday. Last week on oh, last week. So you've been almost a week on your own. Yep. So how is yep. it for how is it for the people out there who are still living and at home or have never been on their own? What's it What's it been like have, being on your own place, totally on your own by yourself in your own pad? What's it been like? Oh uh, well, first day um, moving in at, right after my. Sister uh, left me. Um, do you know what happened? Uh, I, I, no, I don't. <laughs> you just texted me, told me I, that you're uh, that you're gonna be getting your own place, and I thought that was cool. So that's all I know at this point. Well, but well, like I said, right after my sister left me, after she helped me uh, move in, okay. I ended up uh, breaking down. 
And now you're talking about after you moved into your apartment? Yeah, you- I and I ended up uh, crying my eyes out when I moved in. So you're talking about like your first night officially on your own. You had kind of a emotional moment. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I could understand that. I, I think I messaged, I told you the message. I have never actually lived by myself totally alone. I've went from living at home to living in a, in a like a boarding house with roommates. And then I had my core gang of roommates, like the seven of us living together. It was so much fun. Seven, seven guy bachelor pad. And then from there, we pretty much just lived together until I met my wife. And then we moved in together and they eventually got married. So I've never actually had my own place. So I can't even speak to, uh, to through experience what it's like to have my own place. So I could imagine that first night alone when you're let's totally no one there, no one to kind of say, hey, mom, can you get me something? Or, hey, you know, it's like that first night alone. I, I, I can imagine that must have been pretty tough. Is that what it was like? It was so tough for me, actually. Um, I I was just... Putting in my computer chair, just trying to keep it together because I was just like, just, just yes. like mild sobbing because not only it was definitely my first time being on my own, but not only uh, did I felt super lonely, uh, I can't explain this part, but I also felt very scared, to be I, honest. I can understand that. That would be a scary feeling to be. You know, everything you do is relying upon yourself, your food, yeah. taking care of all your all the chores that normally you've had somebody there to kind of help out with that. You're totally doing it on your yep. own. So I, I, I can understand. That's very brave. And it's a very brave move. And you got to pay for everything yeah. now, right? You got to pay for your own rent, your own utilities, all that stuff. Yep, yep, yep. That's yeah. a harsh reality. My and kids haven't experienced after, that yet. After, after, um, after trying to come play on... Um, what I'm trying to do. Um, first thing I did, I tried calling you, dude, but you didn't answer. Oh, I remember that. I remember you calling me, and then you texted me about big things happening. I think I was with my dad at the time, so I, I couldn't answer the phone. We were out um, doing oh, something together. Yeah. But, yeah, that I saw your text later on about what's the big news about. So, well, are you doing better now? So that was the first night, but six, six nights later, things turn around for you? Yep, everything is better. Um, I've been stressed out at work lately because one of my coworkers was being a jerk to me. Uh oh. Oh, that's no good. Well, I know that's part of the challenge of workplace. You always got to deal with people deal with people who aren't always your favorites in the world. So yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Well, um, oh, and I know you, you sent me a message asking about uh, Mariners game. It's crazy that the Mariners are opening at the end of uh, this month. They already start the regular season, which is like, is it already that quick? I forgot. It's like end of March this time. Um, but because it started late. very great in spring training right now. You know, spring training, don't, didn't, don't pay attention to the results in spring training because you get overly excited about a team. Like, oh, we're undefeated in spring training. We're going to the World Series. And then you suck. Uh, it's very different. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. I'm trying not to even pay attention to it. It's because regular season is a whole different deal. So um, okay. I'll, I'll have to get back to you. I'm still trying to figure out my schedule. It's, it gets really busy between now, middle of March, into May and June because of volleyball season travel and everything like that. So, uh, And I got gotcha. work travel projects, too, that I'm trying to juggle. So I will get back to you if we can meet up for another Mariner game. But I appreciate you inviting me. That would be pretty cool to go to an, an early game uh, in the beginning of the year. So I will let you know, brother. Yeah. It's me, my twin brother, and my mom that are going. And I was like, last time, no, last time you had your sister with you. Yes. So, yeah. No, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. All right. You well, I'm going to... definitely make it quick, though. What's that? De- if you can, I respectfully definitely make it quick on whether you would not, or not, you can't. You can I, will let you know, I will let you know by the end of this week, all right? Okay. Perfect. All right, cool. All right, well, I'm going to take on some other callers. I got somebody from the 509 on the east side of the mountains. So I will talk to you later, AD. See you, buddy. Go Hawks. All right, go Hawks. All right, let's go to the phone lines to the 509 to, I believe this is Andrew. Andrew, talk to me. Hey, how's it going, Norb? It's going all right. It's going all right. How about you? Good. We, we uh, I don't know if you remember, we, we kind of chatted a little bit on LinkedIn, if that rings a bell. Um 
just like just like briefly uh, about about it. We we have, I've been following your page for 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 a while. Uh, I think you've done a great job, man. Uh, congrats on the Super Bowl. Uh, well, fan of the year with the Seahawks and being able to go to the Super Bowl. I'm sure that was a great experience. And I just think you're. I think you do great great things, man. I think you're you're obviously a great content creator, but I also appreciate your positivity on your channel. And I think you do an awesome an awesome job. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, it's just, it's definitely some changes, but I uh, just wanted to say what's up first. Uh, love to t- we could definitely talk about my thoughts on it. It's probably similar sentiments to other people's thoughts, but like I said, yeah, yeah you have a great channel, man. I just appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I I, uh, I have not really had a chance to really show the entire scope of what the Super Bowl trip was like, but I am working on a little mini documentary like I did when we went to Super Bowl 48 and 49. Uh, that kind of just shows the whole experience of what it was like to have been uh, the Seahawks fan of the year and going down to Vegas and all the things we got to see there. I, I such posted little clips of little spots, but I, I was shooting a ton, and I'm, I want to put together kind of a, a whole thing from beginning to end that kind of sh- shows everybody what it was like just so I can share that experience. But it was great. It was a great time. It was one of the you know, best memories me and my dad have for forever uh, looking back at that, and it was a, it was a fun game. Turned out well for us, as far as Seahawks fans, if you ask me. So uh, I was more than pleased yeah. with the way that everything turned out. It was exciting right to the end, and man, nail biter. You know, I don't think it would have made it better is if my team was playing. But uh, yes, yeah, it's it a great experience. So thank you, thanks. For, I appreciate the comments. So yeah, what do you got? What's your yeah. thoughts on these uh, moves today, man? Like it? Don't yeah, like yeah. it? I, I like it. Um, I think obviously Mike Mike McDonald is is uh, you know the the future that we're going to with with a, a new coach. And when you think about when Carroll came in, right, there was multiple different personnel moves. And I remember I was watching uh, KJ's KJ Wright's uh, all day podcast, which by the way, I'm not sure if we've talked about that today with his move of, of being a new coach on the Niners, which is definitely it was shocking to me uh, that he's going to the Niners. He's pulling a, a Richard Sherman. Uh, but I just remember he was talking with G on his podcast, how uh, when Carroll came in, um, it was kind of, it was kind of crazy. Cause like, uh, you know, he made multiple different personnel oh, yeah. changes. So I think Record that's number of roster Mike moves. McDonald's doing and mm-hmm. yeah, I I didn't catch what you said there, but I think you know, I think you know, honestly, these three players, like, and I'm saying this objectively. Obviously, I love Diggs, I love Disley. I think they're great players. They're great. They're great guys. But they, I mean, I mean, honestly, all three of these players, like, I kind of turned my head on some of the moves uh, in the past with with this. I didn't really feel like it made a whole lot of sense. I feel like we overpaid these three exact players when they made these transactions in the past. Uh, and it's, it's, it's easy to say that right now, but I definitely felt that way. I mean, I kind of felt like they weren't really worth what they are, just just quite honestly. Um, I think Diggs, obviously, was probably the one guy that stood out amongst the mix of, of in terms of the actual production he gave with the team. But yeah. I just kind of feel like they were just overpaid, honestly, and it's kind of hard to continue to keep paying them where they're at right now. And obviously Mike McDonald's kind of putting his flavor on the, on his team. And I'm, I'm just excited for the future, man. I think Mike McDonald's has, uh, I've been, you know, I've watched some of his interviews and I think he's, I think he's going to take the team in a place that a lot of people don't really, really see eye to eye on, or, or maybe like they don't really understand. Like, I think we definitely got the best coach out of all the hires and there was lots of hires. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm just really excited for the future, man. That's kind of my thoughts. So, yeah, no, I appreciate it. I, I share the same sentiment. Thanks for the call, Andrew, and, and the shout out. Um, yeah, no, I, I think the same way. I'm excited to where they're going with it. I think um, of all the hires out there, you know, I think the only one people were thinking it would be nice to is to get the offensive coordinator from from Detroit, you know, and then he backed out of taking any position and returned to the Lions. So, you know, that was really the only thing because offensive coordinator has kind of been the trend lately. That was the only guy I was thinking ahead of McDonald, but really in the same breath going, well, you know what? Our defense is what we really need to fix. So it was great to get a guy who has shown he knows how to fix defenses. So, yeah, I'm excited about it. I expected, you know, a lot of moves to be made because this is kind of him coming in here and working with John to sort of set up their new identity. And, you know, it's going to be great to see what uh, what comes from all this. Uh, I'm excited as well. So, yeah, but you're right. We definitely overpaid on Jamal Adams. And uh, just like I said, I think that was a little bit on the high side. And, you know, Quandre, I, I was happy with him. It's just this last year, I felt like things had kind of declined a little bit. And, you know, while I wouldn't have been surprised if I kept him, uh, I understand one of those tough decisions that have to be made. But 
I'm going to bring Sam Dog in here. He's bowling right now. Let's see if we can catch him between frames. Sam let's Dog. Make this, yeah, let's make this pass. I'm bowling. Let's make this pass because I'm bowling. You okay, know? all right, all right. But make yeah, it quick. You know, What's your thank, thoughts? Thank God Jamal is gone. Hallelujah. No, risk, you know, should not have made that trade. But I'll tell you what. If there's a guy we need to go after now to bring from Mike McDonald's former team, go get Geno Stone. We got to go get Geno Stone for the secondary to compliment Julian Love. That would be pretty awesome, man. I, I, I wanted to go after uh, Adebuike or whatever his name is. Uh, they put the franchise tag on him, so that D-tackle from from uh, the Ravens ain't going anywhere. But Patrick Queen, that's another name that Maybe I would Patrick love Queen. to see them going after. But, you know, I see why they're making room, making room on the salary cap so they could make room for bringing guys like that over. But, yeah, why not? Yeah, why not bring pieces from that team that he did so well with? I'm with you, man. Yeah, Geno Smith. I mean, Geno Geno Stone, uh, the safety. The safety. He was a first team All Pro safety with Baltimore. Geno Stone was. I feel like McDonald. He's a free agent. We got to freaking bring that dude in. I feel like he would be a perfect complement to Julian Love. Guy gets interceptions, could lower the boom. And question is, like, what else do we want to get? I mean, we released Will Disley. What are the possibilities of maybe the chances of the Jets? You know, the Jets release C.J. Uzama. Could we possibly bring in C.J. Uzama? I remember him from his prime with the Bengals when they went on that Super Bowl run where they lost to the Rams. Right. So C.J. Usama may be a possible Will Disley replacement, maybe, unless we decide to draft the tight end. That's the thing, man, right? It's like, I think we'll know what the draft is going to look like once we get past next week because, obviously, if we're going to fill these holes in, they're going to do it either through free agency or through the draft. And once we kind of know what moves they made in free agency, then we'll kind of know, okay, this is who they've got still holes to fill. So, you know, it's hard to say right now because now we just created more holes, right? Now we need safety help. Yeah. We need tight end help in addition to linebacker, in addition to well, offensive most guard, defensive tackle, most edge rusher. Importantly, most importantly, we need to build the trenches. It's all about the trenches. Remember, I always preach trenches with my father. My dad and I always preach yep. trenches. Bolster up them trenches. For sure, man, and uh, that's why in my uh, I made a video yesterday talking about what we needed to uh, to address in free agency. And two of the guys who I had on my list were tagged on free on uh, on franchise tags today: uh, Burns from the Panthers yeah. and uh, yeah, uh, Weekend from the Ravens. So those two guys are I was on my list, but clearly the teams valued them higher, so they weren't going to let them go anywhere. So, yep, I'm with you, man. We got to shore up the trenches definitely on both sides of the ball. All right, all right. That's all I wanted to talk about. I gotta get back to knock these pins. All right, man. Go get a perfect game for us. Go get, go get that perfect game. All right. Talk to you later, man. Go. All right. Go, Hawk Sam. All right. Cool. Oh, that was uh, Sam Dog. Always coming in with a friendly word. Uh, Close to wrapping up here. Looks like I got one more call on the Discord. Could this be? Oh, it looks like we got Tyler Parcher jumping in here. Tyler P, who's been Dying to get a call in, Ty. Well, we finally got one going on here tonight. Tyler Parcher, what's going on? Oh, what's going on right now? Okay, all right. I, uh, I don't know if I... Well, I'll try to catch some of it. I don't think I'm going to stream. I'm going to save my stream for when uh, Friday comes. That way I have to have a fresh streaming experience with the Kraken from... from Yeah, well, uh, I've, I've got I've got a bunch of stuff I'm catching up with after today's busy day, but that's all right. You know, we will get that going again. Uh, lots of games to come, and uh, hopefully, if the if the uh, Kraken can do well, I would love to see them make another run at the postseason. That was a lot of fun when they made the playoffs. That was uh, a lot of fun. A lot of people jumping on the bandwagon, and I have no idea. I have no idea where my seats are. I'm just showing up. I'm like, okay, you're going to the game on Friday. Okay, cool. <laughs> Tell me what, where to be and where I'm picking up, and uh, I'll discover it when we get there. So, yep. they're not his tickets. They're actually, they're actually um, tickets for. Oops. Oh, I, there we go. I had him muted. Had you muted? Um, they're actually tickets from another friend who basically uh, invited Mark and me. So I think this will be Mark's first game as well as my first game. So we're both seeing it well, for the first the guy time. Will buy, well, the guy might just have to get him from the app on his phone, the Kraken app probably. 
But yeah, we'll probably just go with him and just have him just probably scan us all in. So yeah, we're just yeah. we're tagging along and uh, we'll just let him lead the charge. As to You'll get everything, going. like the intros and everything, huh? Oh yeah, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start early. Definitely, so you know, first game, I gotta try to capture the entire essence of the whole thing and. Yeah. Bring it to to you guys for those of you who are curious what a Kraken game looks like inside that stadium. The uh, the video intros and all that stuff you were talking about. Actually, my my good friend who I grew up with from kindergarten, his son is actually uh, works for the team, and he is is involved with the creation of the media the uh, media content that gets shown during the game. Ooh. So I get to see his handiwork. So it's pretty cool that uh, that he's doing that. So looking forward to. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. That's gonna be a fun. Experience I'm gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be uh, heading to. Uh, I'm not going to opening night for the Mariners, but I'm going to 30th. It's still like opening week. Is that after the first? The Mariners. When's the opening day? It's on the 25th. I'm going on oh, the 30th. So early, 25th. It's so weird because I remember last year they had that delayed strike start, so they didn't start till like when, like mid-April. Yeah, or I was at the game that you were at too. I, we were both at opening night against the Guardians together. Mm-hmm. Yep. Are you, I hope you get to go to a. Uh, maybe you should go to opening night too if Mark wants to go. Um, yeah, I have to see schedule wise. This is big volleyball time for this time of year. A lot of travel going on. So if uh, if I can make it work, I, I will. Uh, would love to do it again. It'd be fun. It's always fun to go to a Mariner well, game. <clears throat> there's a really cool thing where I can. Uh, I sent you this thing from my Apple Watch where we could like share our like workout activity together. It would be really cool to like. Share it and stuff. Yeah, well, I, I don't even know how to. I have an, I have an iPhone or uh, wait, I, Apple Watch. I don't even know how to use half of the features on this damn thing. I like. I do too. I, I got I, the. I, I just uh, my knowledge of this phone is like I point two percent of its capabilities. I just know how to <laughs> see. I can. It, it buzzes my wrist when I'm driving for directions. It. I know when a call is coming in, and uh, I. I can set it up so I know how much I've, the distance I've walked when I've uh, started on a, a walk and how, how many calories I've burned, my heart rate and all that stuff. And that's about it. I don't use the watch for much else. So I'm going to have to do some studying to figure out what more I can do with this thing. So uh, yeah. it, it, I got to I got to spend some time researching this little toy. But it, it is fun. It is a fun little device I'm still getting familiar with. But uh, technology, fun things. 12th yep. man Cam, who just joined the... The Norv fan says, May 10th, I'll be in Seattle to watch the Mariners. Oh, there we go. Well, that's the stuff. I think I might still be out. Of, I might be out of town that week, but we'll see. But anyway, uh, yeah, it'll be cool, man. So, yeah, I will definitely be uh, seeing you on the stream on Friday for the cracking game. That's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm still a mod, too, so I'll be watching the okay. comments, you too. Kick, kick out the riffraff if they get out of control and start tearing up the place. Yeah. All well, right, I have cool. a new computer. Well, it's kind of like uh, I got a little uh, – since my grandpa passed away, I got one of his old computers, and I'm using it in honor of him. Oh, well, that's cool. That's nice of him to, to pass that along to you. So. Well, my dad told me I could bring it home, so that's what I'm doing. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Nice. Good for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, man. Well, it's good talking to you. Take care. We'll be in touch yep. soon. All right. I t- definitely talk right. on Friday unless more breaking news uh, comes along. So there you go. That was uh, uh, Tyler on the Discord. So that I think, wait, there is one more. All right. I'll take one more here before I wrap things up from El Taco. El Taco. Uh, jump in here, man. El Taco. <laughs> Yo, El Taco, what you got? You're the last caller. Hey. What do you have? Um, I'm happy. You like the moves? I mean, that's, that's my one word, really. I'm just happy. Yeah. They're saving a lot of money. Um, I'm not saying they were useless, but they kind of down you this year, so it kind of makes sense. But Quandry, I kind of would miss, but Jamal, get him out of here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who's kind of... Kind, kind of like tied in. It's like when we had our league. worst record defense, it was all during this same period when when uh, Jamal Adams was having his issues. I mean, we, that's when we've had the last two years of one of the worst defenses. It's kind of nice that feeling of well, if we're gonna purge, let's purge it. Let's purge it all yeah. and start and start really uh, fresh. And uh, you yeah, know, we'll see how much they continue to purge. But you know. It's, I could see Quandry coming back like on a like a cheap deal or like if he doesn't like find anyone off season, he can maybe give him like a one year, two million deal, like I mean, a family deal or something. I mean that's a good you point. Know? I mean they could 
any of these guys getting cut, technically they could bring somebody back on a renegotiated deal if they, you know, yeah. we've seen that happen before. So I guess we shouldn't yeah, say that, right. yeah. you know, they're, they're done forever. That could happen. That yeah, could yeah. happen. Well, but, you know, yeah. for now, they are at least as as they were, are no longer with the team as their contracts had been in place yeah. for. So is this one thing I would say about Will Bissy is though, like, we under, like, 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 we didn't use him that much at all. Like he's good, but we just didn't. Use I don't him think in, uh, we utilized the tight ends at all yeah. as efficiently as they could yeah. have. I agree with you there, and that's why again I'm excited to see what this new uh, regime and coordinator can do, uh, because you know Noah Fant seemed to be the only tight end who mostly kind of was utilized yeah. offensively, and out of the three tight end sets, I also thought it was going to be much more effective because when I heard when I when they first kind of had this three tight end set, I was like, ooh, this should be good. You know, I remember they used to run two and three tight end sets back in the early days of Russ and, you know, yeah. had Zach Miller and other guys mm-hmm. who were really, you know, I thought, you know, under, yeah. uh, uh, what do you call it? Undervalued uh, how, how valuable they were to the team and they quite, just mm-hmm. never quite got it going um, as much as they potentially could have during this past year. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, a lot of holes to fill, but you know, they're, they're, they're saving up, Saving up the bank account so they can start getting some guys in here. So, you know, excited I have about a it. controversial opinion right now, but I feel like we should draft Xavier Worthy, and then next year we cut Rocket. You're talking about the dude who broke the four the forty time, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm a little bit biased from a Texas fan. He's from Texas, but yeah. Um, I mean, I'm I know that he's that fast. Because, I don't know beyond him being fast how much, yeah. uh, how great a receiver he is. I mean, I, I was comparing him to, uh, you know, I was looking at John Ross because John Ross was the guy who held the the, mm-hmm. the, the record before yeah, him. And, and he was the 4 2 yeah. uh, 40 time, and he was a UW Husky drafted in 2017 by the Bengals. And he had kind of a forgettable career. He was, he was plagued with shoulder injuries, mm-hmm. had some decent years in there in like 2019, I believe. But then he. Kind of moved to a couple different teams. Last one was like a futures contract with the Chiefs and then retired before the season started. And that was that. It's like, man, yeah. just thought he'd do great things and just never quite um, never quite added up to it. So, um, yeah. yeah, we'll see. I feel like receiver is not the, yeah. the high priority position. There's so many other positions of need, but, you know, we've been shocked but, like, before. He's like an available like, in the later round. I yeah. Like, the fourth, well, I know he's not going to fall that. Though, he probably won't fall is, that far, but I mean, you know, I feel like there's. But I'm saying if he is, yeah, that would be intriguing for sure. Yeah. But I know that's a sexy yeah. pick with the fastest guy ever. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, speed isn't everything for the receiver position. It's nice to have, but it ain't everything. So, yeah, got to have hands. Got to have good route running. Pylock is like, Pylock is like thirty, right? Thirty-one, like, I think. Thirty. Thirty-one, I heard. Yeah. So yeah, I know he's getting Something up there, and he's, he's getting close to that time where it's like he might be looking to hanging up in a in a in a couple of years. I just hope he can get one more, one yeah. more under this regime and see what happens. So that is, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right, so, man. We're gonna okay. wrap things up. But thanks for calling. I appreciate yeah. you guys. Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, to everybody else, thanks for watching the show. For everybody who uh, uh, was active in the chat, uh, keep your thoughts going. Put your thoughts in the comments, what you thought of the move so far, and more to come. As uh, Every day I expect there's going to be some new moves done by the Seahawks. But uh, Friday will be the live stream from the Climate Pledge Arena for my first ever Kraken game. It's going to be a blast. So thanks again, guys. Appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Go Hawks.